Hey, hey everyone. Uh, we're at day three of Q. We're on our way home. Yeah, we're in the airport. It's uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon and, and a great, great final day with one of our favorite presenters from the entire conference, uh, Heather Larson from Willow Creek. Yeah, she was great. Uh, she held her own. The men tried to put her down a few times, actually, just kind of they mocked her, poking, they mocked her poking in front of her and, teased. and mega teased. churches in general. Uh, they teased her, but yeah, she came wielding. She brought the heat, heels. and she said, These are the good things that a good church can do. Willow is a big church. It seems we have lots of resources, and here's all the things we're doing to make a difference in the world, not just with evangelism, but with social justice and goodness and missional activity all over the world. And, and P.S., there was a whole list of them. Yeah. So, like, like 15 minutes of here's here's the things that we're doing that make a practical difference to feed, clothe, educate, help people all over the world. And that was really cool. Yeah, because here's the deal. It's easy to take pot shots at the mega church. Mm -hmm. It's it's so simple. Yeah. It's like it's like people um, saying kids shouldn't listen to Marilyn Manson because he's ruining in America. It's just too easy. That's dumb. Oh, it's they're the same because they're both easy. Even. Yeah, they're easy. Oh, okay. It's easy arguments. Because uh, I don't often think of Marilyn Manson when I think of Bill Hybels. No, I mean, but isn't that awesome that we just said those in the same sentence? Marilyn yeah. Manson in khaki pants is kind of almost as terrifying for me as, as Bill Hybels with an electric guitar. That is scary. Yeah, or that weird suit that Manson wears. Or, or Bill Hybels with a different colored eye, like with a white <laughs> eye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Or yeah, or any music video featuring Bill Hybels. Oh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, but we love Bill Hybels. I do. Honestly. I think He's... Bill Hybels is fantastic. I wish I was related to Bill Hybels. I, I um, owe uh, a lot to that yeah. man. A great deal. Uh, anyway, cut all, from a different cloth. All, all, and sure, he calls better than we do. That's fine. Right. But I, I will say though, it feels like every young pastor has to go through a stage of, of mega hate, mega church hate. <laughs> it feels like a, a part of our spiritual development, for tic, particularly for postmoderns and millennials, is they have to go through this thing where they they go big is evil. It, it just feels like something sure. they have to go through because everybody goes through it. What makes me sad sometimes about um, conferences or just Christian literature in general is that those guys get a lot of press. And it's so easy to right. just be sort of grouchy and adolescent. And it's the equivalent of like the, the teenage kid with the black fingernails in his room with all his anarchy posters right. all over the wall. And you kind of know, I know you're going to grow out of it because right. nobody's 40 and does that. But The Cure is a great band, too. They are. They, they, get, are. A bad, they get a bad rap, too. But, but, those guys. but it, feels, it, it does feel like a phase. Now, to be fair, we feel like things really are shifting in the church in the West, and they need to. And maybe the mega church isn't the complete future, and, that, and that's totally cool. I, I just it just bugs me when it gets all you know yeah. peevish and sure. Bish. Yeah, you can go through it, but it has to be short lived. Like ask the right questions, talk to the right people, and then get over it. Rich yeah. white boy. Yeah, there there really should be an awareness that that we should speak slowly when we react against those fads. Right. So anyway, Heather. Great job if you're watching this. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, you you're have cool. our permission if you want to show this video at Willow Creek at the summit. <laughs> That'd be okay with us. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. And we would understand why you would want to. Or wait for that, that. That. They're actually translating our film into Spanish for the whole airport, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, other favorites, uh, honestly. Uh, we'll wait for the thing to be over. So we'll just cut this part out because it's stupid. This is a dumb thing. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> you overcut that part out. Mm -hmm. How about? You wouldn't know this, but we're back. <laughs> we had to edit a whole bunch of things that Dave said. <laughs> Move an announcement overhead. That's why we had to add. Mm -hmm. There was an announcement. I might have said one Espanol. or two things that was also a little <laughs> a bit inappropriate. Game <laughs> was being a bit inappropriate. So, Which is so the only fast time. forward. That's my one time this year I'm going to do that. Right. So uh, another, another guy I just liked. I don't know if he said anything to rock my world, but uh, Rick McKinley from Portland. I like him. I like him because he's legit. Mm-hmm. I just I like you, Rick. You're you're a cool guy. Mm -hmm. And um, my friend Sean Garman at Red Sea in Portland says great things about you, and I trust him. We did we He's did cool. make a couple comments. I made a couple comments today on Twitter about about how little Bible there was in this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't actually think I don't I'm not, I'm not actually convinced that that's all the way bad. I know that, I know that sounds really really bad. Um, 
But but what I meant by that is that um, you know, first of all, half the presenters didn't have anything to do with with the church or the gospel, which is okay because they invited a bunch of non-believers to talk sure. about issues of society and culture right. and so the future. So that's we're not uh, obviously ex- yeah, they're not going to expect. Gonna use, expect the, yeah, we're not going to expect. Yeah, that. they're not going to bring the word, and that's that's totally cool. And then among those that did. Many of them were just bringing sort of generally Christian perspectives on things. And then only a couple of the pastors really brought any of the biblical text. Now, the part that sort of bugs me about that is that the guys who did bring issues and a Christian perspective on issues, they really just brought a Christian perspective, not a biblical theology. And I think the scriptures have a lot to say about things like science and technology being right. countercultural. And so it just felt like a missed opportunity. I thought, Here's a part where, like, good people have good right. Jesus things to say, and they, and they said them well. However, it lacked a lot of the punch and the depth right. and, and the worth that a, a substantive biblical theology of any of those things would have sure. brought. So, so, like, on the continuum, you have chicken soup for the soul. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have Zig Ziglar and Robert Schuller, right? And mm-hmm. We're not saying it was even that. It just wasn't... NIV exhaustive commentary. Well, actually, uh, I mean, I don't think the topic, I don't think the subject matter was Zig Ziglar or Robert Schuller, but I actually think the content was was very similar, at least the presentation. Sure. Like, I, I, I just think that they were saying, as a Christian, I feel these things, and I think they're true because I love Jesus, and because I feel these ways out of my love for Jesus, therefore these things are sort of Christian. Which, right. Which is fine, but, you know, one of the things I love about the sort of angry tribe of Christians the, the angry Mark Driscoll's, you know, who, who sometimes <laughs> if you frustrate me, he is angry. He's an angry person. He, yeah, he but, is. But he loves the word, and he can dive into the word. And that they they really needed somebody like that. Right. And right. Uh, because they made assumptions. They, they, made, they made a lot of assumptions, assumptions yeah. that everybody is caught up to speed with their uh, Bible knowledge, their wherefores and whys and. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm not sure that those assumptions were safe, or even sure. if those assumptions were all the way good. And, and I didn't feel like they were even particularly grounded in an understanding, more just kind of a, a, a general mood. Now, Tim right. Keel, on the other hand, he brought the heat. He really did a great job. Yeah, he was great. Diving into scriptures. He's pastor of Jacob's Well. He, he was the good, the good counterpoint. But he was only one out of a, a lot of right. speakers. But again, I don't think that's all the way bad. Just as we kind of evaluate the whole conference, that's something that I think they could maybe look at next year. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to add to that? No. Um, it, today was the day that I met more people than any other day. Just like walking around the lobby, making good connections with some good people who are doing mm-hmm. some great things in their churches. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it was exciting. Yeah, it was good. It was pretty low key today. Yeah, but but it was also a good day to, to round things up. And we we made a lot of great connections. Came up with a, t- a ton of great ideas and. And certainly the, the things where we get to sort of commit and evaluate and, and um, decide for ourselves what sort of things feel good for us, for Jesus in us, for Westwinds, those things are so crucial. Yeah. So, and it's going to be in Chicago next year, which feels yeah. great. With all that, we, we really, we really do think that this has been a great experience. Yeah. Q is great. Great conversation. Great, uh, you know, banter. Mm-hmm. Some things made us angry. Some things made us laugh. You got angry? When did you get angry? I got angry at you. What did you get me for? We shared a hotel room. Ooh. John did something to my pillow this morning. And let me just say, no, 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 let me just say, I hope they do wash the pillowcases. I'm just, I don't, nothing else needs to be said. I mean, you could have you just smeared peanut butter on it. I mean, that's that's what they could be, they could be or that there was a fluff or something on the pillow. But I'm just going to say... This is the part where we wonder if we keep this part on the video. And we probably will. Because that's funny. We is who we is. So, love you guys. And we is uh, not staying at that Marriott. (laughs) You did that to my pillow. That's who we is. Anyway, There's so many things I'd love to say right now. But I'm a good friend. I'm going to go back to my time in prayer before the Lord. Hallelujah. Right. I've been in prayer the whole time. Praying they watch the pillowcase. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 